and welcome to Health Matters on Channels Television. We are so glad you could, you could join us today. I am Mary Alale Yusuf. Now, we're talking about fistulas. A fistula is a passage or hole that has formed between two organs in the body or between an organ in the body and the skin. One in the wall of the vagina is called a vaginal fistula. If that opens into the urinary tract, it's a vesicle vaginal fistula. And the name changes according to what structure the fistula opens into. Collectively, they are obstetric fistulas. Now, reliable data on obstetric fistulas are lacking, but UNFPA estimates between 2 and 4 million women suffer from them in Africa, Southeast Asia, and the Middle East, with another 50,000 to 100,000 new cases every year. My guests are Dr. Olatunji Lawal, a consultant obstetrician and gynecologist currently with the Marie Stopes International Organization in Abuja. His special, special learn, leaning is towards obstetric fistula and non-fistulous urinary incontinence. Also is Faith Fuchs, my second guest, and she's a lawyer with a master's degree in business administration. And she has a passion to end fistula in Nigeria and also prevent fistula in Nigeria. You're welcome to the show. Thank you very much Thank for having us. So let's start with Dr. Lawal. When people say vesicle vaginal fistula, for example, people think underaged bride. What's the real story here? Well, like you said earlier on, that um, the vesicle vaginal fistula is an abnormal communication between the urinary bladder and the vagina. Okay, that means that there's a hole communicating between that bladder and the vagina. And the woman continually leaks urine involuntarily. That means that she's sitting down, she's leaking urine. She's walking around, she's leaking urine. She's going out, she's leaking urine. So perpetually she's leaking urine all the time. It's an abnormal situation. So when you look at it, though we look at the data we have, about 25% of those with that kind of fistula are actually women that are under the age of 18. Okay. Or women who are married That's under the age of 18. About 25%. What's with the but the other 25% are above 18 years of age. So maybe the problem, looking at that statistic, the problem is not really um, that of child marriage. The problem is the fact that when these women get pregnant, they don't have access to emergency obstetric service. So that's where the problem is. Why is it so important? I mean, a woman gives birth to a child. Lots of women have children at home, slap the child, he cries, and everybody is happy, and she goes on normally. Why are some people having the fistula and others not having? It's a multifaceted problem in the country as a whole. Even in sub-Saharan Africa, it's a multifaceted pr problem. There are some women, because of cultural and religious reasons, they want to give birth at home, which is commoner in the northern part of the country where they don't want to have access to um, healthcare facilities. For some women, they want to go to healthcare facilities, but they don't have transportation to move from one point to the other. They are living in the villages, they are living somewhere very far inside, uh, maybe a bush or somewhere, where they can't actually come out from. In the night when they are pregnant, when they are in labor, they can't leave that place to go to the hospital, the nurse facility. So no lack of transport to that place, to, to the facility. But for, for some, even when they have transport to leave the facility, there is no facility to go to. Okay, so they end up giving birth at, at home. home, and something goes wrong something goes with wrong. the birth with the birthing process. What yes. goes goes wrong with the birthing process? What you expect is that if a woman wants to give birth in the next twelve hours, if she's in active labour, she should have delivered. Okay, but for those kind of women who don't have access to emergency obstetric care, they are at home for two days, three days in labour. In labour, in labour, for two days, three days, it's abnormal. She's okay, so pain. in essence, it's the prolonged labor and that leads to, to the fistulous cases. Exactly. The labor becomes obstructed. The baby can't come out through the bed canal because either the bed canal is too small for the baby or the baby is too big for that bed canal. The head gets obstructed in that bed canal and she's pushing and pushing for days. Due to that obstruction, what happens? The bony pelvis the, the, the the is a bony structure. The head of the baby is a bony structure. When two bony structures come together, and you have soft tissues intervening in between those bony structures. These soft tissues are the bladder, the vagina, the rectum behind. So when you have that, a lot of ischemic problem goes on. Oxygen can't get to those tissues. Okay? There's ischemic. Okay, so the ischemia, tissue begins to die. There's necrosis, and they begin to slough off, and they communicate together, forming a fistulous of them. And everything just mixes together. together. It's a Urine, fecal terrible. matter. Terrible. Faith, tell me, why are you doing this? You're a lawyer. 
you have a business administration, masters in business administration. Why are you into uh, fistulas? Well, I'm not that different from the women who are suffering from fistula because I had my own health challenges. I like to say I had a rocky path to motherhood. I had seven fibroid surgeries before I got pregnant. Um, I got pregnant when I was 40. I had my baby when I, I was 41. I had preeclampsia in pregnancy. My daughter was born at seven months. She weighed 1.6 kilos. Throughout all that time, I had the best possible care because I live in Geneva in Switzerland and they took care of me as if their lives depended on it. My daughter is here today, I'm here today because I got that care. But whilst I was in hospital, all I kept thinking was, what is happening to our sisters back home? And I wanted to try to intervene, do something to contribute, and then I happened upon fistula. When I heard about it, I couldn't believe that people today, women today, sit in their bodily wastes because they do not have the care that they need. So that's one of the reasons why I do what I do. What has happened though is that my personal experience, my passion to help, have converged to sort of, how should I describe it, maybe a pyramid of purpose. The purpose now which is driving me to try to eradicate fistula in Nigeria and in Africa. Okay, now, doctor, I need to ask you, are fistulas painful? Is this woman going through pain as well as all this other what, stuff? What she's going through is actually more than pain. Like I said before, imagine a woman who continually leaks urine at every point throughout the day. She's asleep, she's leaking urine. She's bedwetting. She walking, can't control it. She can't control it. She keeps licking urine. And for some, they lick even feces. So when you look at that, that means that that woman will continue to smell of urine. She can't go out. She can't socialize. She's ostracized. She's depressed. For most women who have that kind of problem, your husband will probably like it to like a divorce. Divorce the woman, separate from the woman, send her back, uh, back home. And even when she gets home, most of the women, you know what they do to them? They keep them somewhere in the compound, somewhere far away from the main household because they don't want to smell urine, they don't want to see them and all that. I can so imagine that depression begins to set in for some of them. Terrible. Are there um, some medical consequences of not attending to fistulas, obstetric fistulas in time? Well, <clears throat> the whole process as a whole of developing obstetric fistula has a, a complex because when these women, when they have this problem, it's not only the fistulous opening that is the problem. Some of them, we have problems with their limbs. Because of that prolonged compression, that prolonged obstetric labor, it affects the nerves supplying the lower limbs. So they come in with obstetric palsy, paralysis of the leg, weakness of the feet. Okay? Some of them, we have problems even walking. They will develop contractures. Some of them, we have problems even using defecating because they have structures of the rectal mucosa. Mm -hmm. So, uh, so, uh, so apart from even the fistulas opening, there are other medical conditions that also develop with that problem, which we have to also, you know... Okay, I can see on the screen now the way the baby is placed. Okay. So we have um, the head can press on the bladder. Yes, which is anterior. And on the bowels, isn't that right? Yes. So that's where the problems can now come in. Yes. When it presses, there's pressure and then a whole form. Then, then there's necrosis. And when there's necrosis, the tissue dies and there's sloughing off. And there's communication between the bladder, which is anterior, and the vagina, which is in between. And also, sometimes there can be a communication between the rectum, which is posterior, and the vagina, which is anterior. But if it is a matter of prolonged labor, that means that you should have some fistula patients from the south as well. I mean, um, there's prolonged labor in the south as well. But whenever we talk about obstetric fistulas, we think of the north. Yes. Well, you know, the major body of obstetric fistula in the country is actually in the northern part of Nigeria. Okay. You don't take that away. But actually, now in the south, 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 southern part of Nigeria, we are beginning to see a lot of cases. Women who never even knew that there was a solution to their problems. Who had this problem? They just stay at home. They don't come out at all. They don't talk about it. They live with it. So now in the southwestern part of Nigeria, and even in the southeastern part and, 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 the, and, the, and the south south part of Nigeria, we are going to see a lot of cases of obstetric fistula. Okay, we'll, we'll go to more of that when we come from the break. Let's take a quick break and come back after now. Stay with us.